Thanks for joining us at 10. I'm Anna Torreya. Our chief meteorologist, Dan Sianca, is here now. He joins us. Dan, sounds like more cold weather ahead, but hopefully, I think you mentioned a little, warmer weather is on the way. Yeah, we got a three-day, well, some people have a three-day weekend coming up. President's Day weekend, you might have a three-day weekend. I don't know, but it looks like weather will be a little bit warmer and drier by the time we get there. But we've got a couple of cold nights to get through. We've got some rain on the horizon as well. Here's a live look from Domenico's to start things off tonight. Skies are mostly clear late this evening here across the region. We don't really have any clouds. There are a few thin high clouds just offshore, but that's about it. Otherwise, we're looking pretty stellar out there. Now, temperatures aren't necessarily warm, but you know, we'll, we'll get there eventually. The bigger picture reveals not much going on across the Golden State. We do have some high clouds just out to sea, uh, part of a storm system, which you can kind of pick out here. Uh, we were watching this system, you know, as of about five, three or four days ago, we were talking about the potential for some rainfall from it. It is not going to make it here, though. It'll stay offshore, and uh, that's where its rain will remain as well. So this first system, not expected to bring any precipitation for us. Here it is in, in all of its uh, glory by Friday early in the morning. And here we are right here just south of San Francisco. We can see the green on the map just stays offshore as this low moves to the south. Now, with that said, another system by midweek next week well, looks like it's going to be a little more on the wetter side and a colder side. That's another thing we're going to watch with this system. So this is next Tuesday. Looks like a system comes through Tuesday into Wednesday, and then it kind of stalls here on the West Coast. So this may be a multi-day rainfall event. Models are trending wetter with it. Interestingly enough, too, it looks pretty cold, like lower elevation snowfall style cold across the state. So a lot to watch out for with this system. I think Wednesday through the end of next week is going to be very interesting. There's a potential for some uh, moisture to be pulled up from the subtropics, which could lead to some heavier rainfall. It's been quite some time since we've seen any. Of course, the first couple of weeks of January, we saw plenty of it, and things have been pretty quiet since then. But we may be watching a potential return to some heavier precipitation. So lots to keep out for. So make sure you're staying tuned to my forecast here over the next couple of days. In the meantime, we do have something to get through overnight, and that is those clear skies allowing temperatures to drop. This is 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Future cast looking pretty quiet. During the rest of the day tomorrow, we will continue to see mostly clear conditions and then an eventual increase in high clouds from the west as that system approaches. That's the system that won't be reaching us, but we'll get some of its clouds anyway. So a general excuse me, increase in clouds tomorrow. But otherwise, a pretty nice day after the morning, which is going to be cool. We do have some frost and freeze alerts, including a freeze warning for the mountains and higher valleys of Monterey and San Benito counties and the Diablo range as well. And also a frost advisory for the lower valleys of Monterey, San Benito counties, Santa Clara County and our coastal areas, including the Santa Cruz Mountains. So freeze warning means temperatures are cold enough to get below freezing for several hours, which could do irreparable damage to plants. Uh, freeze them essentially in a frost advisory, meaning that the temperatures are expected just to make some frost on leaves, which can do some damage, but maybe not kill the whole plant. Wilt the leaf not kill the plant? That's the kind of situation. So let's talk about your neighborhoods here. We'll get into Santa Cruz Mountains first. How cold is it going to get in the San Lorenzo Valley? Well, some spots may dip into the upper 20s. On average, most locations will see a low around 30, 31 degrees within a degree or two of that. But with the nature of how cold air works and how it can be very dense, you know, if you live in a low sheltered area where the wind isn't blowing at all, it's possible those temperatures can get even lower by a few more degrees. And obviously that is below freezing and can be quite damaging to some plants. So uh, if you uh, frost regularly during the winter time, you're going to see some tomorrow morning, no doubt about it. Back into the upper 50s for our highs in the Santa Cruz Mountain Valleys. Up high, a little cooler tomorrow, only 49 your high in Bonnie Dune. Santa Cruz, you top out at 58 after a low of 35. Can't rule out a little patchy frost, especially in some northern neighborhoods of the city. Watsonville, you're 59 tomorrow after a low of 33. We're at 61 in Salinas, mid 30s for our lows, low 30s in our northern valleys. Valley's highs, upper 50s to around 60. Over to the peninsula and vicinity, expecting lows in the mid to upper 30s. It's going to be a chilly night, patchy frost possible around the peninsula. Your highs returning to the upper 50s, which is still a little cool for this time of year. And then down south, we'll see some spots in the 20s, uh, certainly even King City down to 29 overnight. But highs returning to the low 60s in the Salinas Valley. So let's look at that seven day forecast and talk about how things progress from here. On the coast, we'll see a slight warm up on Friday, then kind of level off through President's Day weekend. Our lows will be a little bit warmer as well, but 
only by a few degrees. And then once we get past Monday, we're going to start looking at some rain chances next week. Uh, as far as like hazardous conditions from the precipitation, it may be more of a cumulative effect. So later in the week in that Thursday to time, Friday time frame, we may be more likely to see the heavier rainfall or you know, several days of rain, which have caused some issues. So those first two days right now, I'm not looking at any major impacts, but we're going to keep a close eye on things. Inland areas, we'll actually see a little bit warmer weather as we head through the weekend, including the lows, but highs uh, about seasonable as we head through the weekend. And of course, all eyes on that potential wetter series of storms mid to late week next week, Anna. All right, thanks so much for that, Dan.